Welcome to this educational program. This module discusses a particular type of radiation treatment for prostate cancer called brachytherapy. There are other modules available that provide an overview of prostate cancer and discuss other treatments in greater detail. This information is taken from a recent review of the medical literature and attempts to be as comprehensive as possible. However, it may not necessarily reflect the experience of your healthcare provider or the specifics of your situation. This program is strictly informational in nature, and no attempt is made to provide opinion or recommendation. Please feel free to view this presentation as many times as necessary. You may also use the player on your left to repeat slides or to skip through them in any order you wish. Prostate cancer is the uncontrolled growth of gland cells in the prostate, a small gland just below the bladder that surrounds the urethra or urine channel. This common cancer is detected most commonly by the prostate-specific antigen or PSA blood test and digital rectal exam or DRE, and the diagnosis is confirmed by a biopsy, which allows doctors to look at the prostate cells under a microscope. Localized or organ-confined prostate cancer means that there is no clear evidence of cancer spread outside the borders of the prostate at the time of diagnosis, based on the information available, meaning the PSA, the digital exam, and the biopsy report. There are many treatment options available for localized prostate cancer. Accepted standard options include active surveillance with possible delayed treatment, surgery, called a radical prostatectomy, and two types of radiation, external beam radiation and brachytherapy. The rest of this module discusses brachytherapy in more detail. Emerging treatments for localized prostate cancer, which are considered either experimental or too new to provide long-term data on their use, include cryoablation or freezing of the prostate, high-intensity focused ultrasound or HIFU, and several others. Brachytherapy is a form of radiation therapy that uses radioactive seeds or pellets placed directly into the prostate under ultrasound guidance. The seeds are left there permanently and the radiation is given off gradually over a period of months. Each seed, commonly made of radioactive iodine or palladium, is less than half a centimeter long and less than one millimeter thick and is enclosed in a metal case. It is about the size and length of a pencil lead tip. About 80 to 120 seeds are implanted in the prostate, depending on the prostate size and shape. They are positioned to evenly radiate the entire prostate, plus a margin outside the prostate of just a few millimeters. The seeds give off a high dose of radiation that is capable of killing rapidly dividing cancer cells faster than normal body cells, and that is absorbed almost entirely within the prostate. The dose of radiation delivered with brachytherapy is about one and a half times greater than can be given with external radiation treatments. The term brachy is Greek for short distance, therefore brachytherapy means therapy at short distance or treatment of cancer at the source. Over time, the radioactive material decays. Its radioactivity for iodine seeds, for example, decreases by half every 60 days, so that by six months, about 85% of the radiation has been given, and by one year, it is almost entirely delivered. The inactive seeds remain in the prostate permanently and do no harm. This slide shows graphically how the radioactivity of the seeds decreases over time, such that by 12 months, there is almost no ongoing effect. This also shows that the majority of the dose is given initially within the first three months and then rapidly trails off thereafter. Not all patients have a cancer that is suitable for this treatment, and most experts agree that the best patients are those that meet these criteria. Clinical stage less than T2B, a Gleason score of less than 6 or 7, a PSA of less than 10 to 15, life expectancy of at least 5 to 10 years or more, and a prostate size smaller than 50 grams and no significant urinary difficulties or prior history of transurethral resection of the prostate, or TERP, for prostate enlargement. Different treatment centers will have different eligibility criteria, and these criteria might also change over time. Patients with higher risk features may be candidates for external radiation therapy or surgery, which are discussed separately. Patients with intermediate risk cancer, meaning clinical stage T2B, Gleason score 7, or PSA 10 to 20, may still be candidates for brachytherapy, but may require additional treatment with hormone therapy or external beam radiation to improve cancer control. Patients with larger prostates may also be candidates, but might require hormone therapy to shrink the prostate prior to treatment. Most men with prostate cancer will have been seen by a urologist, a surgeon who specializes in the urinary and male reproductive systems, who will make the initial diagnosis and discuss treatment options. 
This doctor may offer brachytherapy as an option or may make a referral to a radiation oncologist for an opinion on this treatment. A radiation oncologist is a physician specializing in treating cancer with radiation. During the consultation, the doctor will determine a patient's eligibility and suitability for brachytherapy and discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the procedure. If the patient is eligible for brachytherapy and chooses this as his treatment, then planning for seed implantation will begin next. A few weeks before the implant procedure, the urologist or radiation oncologist will make a detailed map of the prostate using a transrectal ultrasound, or truss, a procedure that uses a small ultrasound probe inserted into the rectum to accurately gauge the size and position of the prostate. More recently, the procedure can be done all in one day, with the ultrasound being performed at the start of the procedure after you are under anesthetic. This is called real-time planning, and this is now being offered at some centers. The oncologist, a radiation physicist, and a dosimetrist, a person who calculates the proper radiation dosage, aided by computers, will use the ultrasound results to determine the number and strength of seeds needed to treat the cancer and exactly where the seeds should go. A special CT scan, called a pubic arch assessment, may also be performed to ensure the pubic bones will not interfere with the placement of needles into the prostate during seed implantation, but this is not done at all centers. Brachytherapy takes about one hour to complete and is usually an outpatient procedure, meaning it does not require an overnight hospital stay. Typically, patients go home within a few hours after the implant and return to work and normal activities within a few days. The night before the implant, patients will need to have an enema, a procedure that puts liquid into the rectum to empty the contents of the bowel, and may be given a medication called an alpha blocker that relaxes the neck of the bladder, allowing urine to flow more freely. This medication may be continued for three to six months following the procedure to help decrease prostate swelling and prevent and treat urinary symptoms that can occur. On the day of the procedure, the nurse will review your medical history and check your vital signs, including your blood pressure, pulse, and temperature. An intravenous or IV line will likely be started, through which you will receive fluids and later medications. An enema is given in some centers if not done so the day before. You will then meet with an anesthesiologist who will administer anesthetic drugs and monitor your vital signs during surgery. The anesthesiologist will review different anesthetic options with you and discuss their merits and potential risks. Finally, prior to surgery, you will meet once more with your radiation oncologist or urologist and any final concerns can be addressed. Once in the operating room, an intravenous or IV line will be started if not done already. You will then be put to sleep by the anesthesiologist and a breathing tube will be introduced. In some centers, the procedure is performed using spinal anesthesia given through a needle in the back, which freezes a patient from the waist down. Other tubes and monitoring lines may then be placed, including a catheter into the bladder. Brachytherapy is usually performed under general anesthetic, which is medication that blocks pain and causes a deep sleep. Once the patient is anesthetized, an ultrasound probe is placed in the rectum and the prostate is inspected using sound waves from the ultrasound device. The picture of the prostate generated in this way is used to guide the placement of the brachytherapy seeds. The seeds are loaded into individual needles and passed through the perineum, which is the area between the scrotum and anus, and into the prostate. As the needles penetrate the prostate, they are seen on the monitor and can be accurately guided to their predetermined position. When each needle is in its correct position, the needles are then slowly withdrawn, leaving the seeds behind. Both the probe and the needles are removed when the procedure is completed, and a catheter, or tube, will remain temporarily in the bladder to help drain urine. This slide shows the typical setup, with the ultrasound probe in place in the rectum to guide passage of the needles, which contain the radioactive seeds. Refinements in technology and surgical technique allow doctors to place seeds into the prostate as precisely as possible to ensure that the maximum radiation is delivered to the prostate to kill all cancer cells, while at the same time limiting the amount of radiation to surrounding structures. As precise as this may be, however, one can never guarantee that neighboring structures will not be affected. You can appreciate in this drawing that several important organs and structures lie immediately next to the prostate, the bladder, the rectum and anus, the urinary sphincter or valve muscle, and the erectile tissues and nerves of the penis. Radiation to any of these can lead to certain side effects. The most common side effects of brachytherapy are bladder and rectal irritation and minor discomfort. Bladder symptoms are most common, with up to 80% of men experiencing urgent and frequent urination, especially in the first two months after the procedure when radiation is most intense. 
These symptoms may persist for up to a year in up to 45% of patients. About one half of men experience burning with urination, which peaks at about one month after treatment. Bladder symptoms may be lessened by the use of medications called alpha blockers beginning before treatment. It is also helpful to reduce caffeine and smoking and to use anti-inflammatory medications as necessary. Radiation proctitis, meaning radiation effect on the rectum causing irritation, rectal bleeding, and runny stools, can occur in 1 to 39% of patients. This is usually mild and short-lived. More severe problems of ulceration or the development of a hole or fistula in the rectum are rare. Fortunately, although side effects are common, they are usually short-lived and are very treatable with medications and other therapies. Burning with urination and blood in the urine for a few days are also common short-lived side effects, as is some mild discomfort and bruising in the perineum, the space between the scrotum and the anus. Some blood in the ejaculate or painful ejaculation may also persist for as long as six to eight weeks. Stomach upset and lower abdominal pain are also described by some men. In addition, some seeds can make their way out of the prostate into nearby or even distant tissues, such as the lung. However, since usually only a very few seeds migrate elsewhere and the dose of radiation is very low for each individual seed, the total dose to these other areas like the lung is very small and not harmful. While the radiation from seeds is generally not harmful to others, a patient might be advised to avoid close contact with small children and pregnant women for the first few months after treatment. Radiation from the seeds will not affect electrical signals or devices, but can set off radiation detectors when crossing country borders like the USA and Canada. Therefore, your doctor will give you a card that states you have had this procedure and that you are safe to travel. More serious side effects from brachytherapy include acute urinary retention, the inability to urinate, urine leakage and incontinence, the inability to control urination, sterility, the inability to father children, and erectile dysfunction, also called ED or impotence, the inability to have or maintain an erection. Virtually all patients lose the ability to father children after radiation therapy, so banking sperm for future use should be discussed with a doctor prior to treatment, if this is important to you. Acute urinary retention occurs due to swelling and stiffening of the prostate from the effects of radiation. It is most likely in patients with large prostates or those who already have significant urinary difficulties. Urinary retention occurs in 2 to 34% of patients, and while it is usually very short-lived, in up to 2 to 10% of men who experience it, it may go on for more than one week and may even persist six months or longer. Finally, scarring in the urine channel or urethra, called a urethral stricture, occurs in 5 to 10% of men after brachytherapy and can also block urine flow. In these rare cases, urinary retention may require the long-term use of a catheter or tube in the bladder. Placement of a suprapubic catheter, which is a tube into the bladder through the skin at the base of the abdomen, or surgical removal of part of the prostate, called a transurethral resection of the prostate, or TERP. If this surgical procedure is required, the surgeon must be especially careful, as it is riskier to do after brachytherapy than in non-radiated men. There is a higher chance of causing permanent loss of urinary control or damage to the rectum in these men. Urine control problems after brachytherapy are different than those that might occur after surgery and are usually due to bladder irritability from the effects of radiation, causing what is called an overactive bladder. This results in frequent urination and sudden urges to urinate which are difficult to control and can lead to what is termed urge incontinence. While these symptoms are usually very short-lived, they can persist in a few men and can be difficult to treat. They may require the long-term use of medications to relax the bladder and or prostate muscle. The sphincter or urinary control valve muscle can also be weakened by radiation, although this rarely has any noticeable effect on a man. In severe cases, it could cause leakage with coughing and straining, called stress incontinence, but again, this is rare unless a prostate resection or TERP has also been required. The risk of erectile dysfunction or ED following radiation varies widely and is dependent on a number of factors, including pre-existing ED, the use of other treatments and other medical conditions that may affect erections, age, smoking, obesity, and medical problems such as diabetes or high blood pressure. It is important to understand that while erections may be well preserved after brachytherapy, the effects of radiation continue to affect the body's tissues for several years, and the quality of erections in some men may begin to worsen several years after the treatment. The overall risk of ED after brachytherapy ranges from 30 to 50 percent 
and is similar to people having a nerve sparing surgery. However, it occurs a number of years after the procedure rather than immediately afterwards as it can following surgery. Erectile dysfunction related to prostate cancer and its treatment are discussed in detail in a separate module. Here we will make a quick note that in some cases, some men may require that brachytherapy be combined with hormone therapy to shrink the prostate prior to brachy or external beam radiotherapy to maximize cancer control. In these cases, men must understand that hormone therapy has its own side effects and may worsen or prolong sexual side effects, and that external beam radiotherapy may increase the risk of bladder and bowel side effects and erectile dysfunction. Typically, one month following the implant, patients are required to return to the hospital for x-rays, a CT scan, possibly an MRI scan, and a PSA blood test. This follow-up CT or MRI is needed to determine the quality of the implant that was performed. The diagnostic imaging scans are used to calculate the dose of radiation received by the prostate and to determine how good an implant was performed. A chest x-ray may also be done to check if any seeds have migrated through the bloodstream into the lungs. The PSA, or prostate-specific antigen blood test, is a sensitive marker for following treatment of prostate cancer. After brachytherapy, patients are monitored closely with PSA tests on a regular basis, and a steadily declining PSA is a good indicator that the treatment has been successful in killing the cancerous cells. It is important to understand that compared to surgery, after radiation, the PSA level will not drop to zero because the prostate is still intact. The PSA level should drop, however, to a very low level where it stabilizes more or less. The definition of a so-called biochemical failure after brachytherapy is a PSA level that rises consecutively three or more times. The lowest level of PSA achieved is called the PSA nadir. The cutoff value for PSA nadir to define initial success varies somewhat depending on who you ask and has been a controversial topic. Generally, however, it should be in the range of less than 0.5 or 1. Another thing that patients should be aware of is a phenomenon called the PSA bounce, seen in up to 30% of patients after brachytherapy. This short-lived rise in PSA is an effect of the radiation and does not mean that the cancer has progressed. The term cure when it comes to prostate cancer treatment is a difficult term to define and hotly debated. The best definition would be no evidence at all of any recurrent cancer at the time a man eventually dies of another cause, but this is not practical when studying this disease for two main reasons. Firstly, because prostate cancer can affect relatively young men, it would be challenging to follow all patients for that long of a period. Secondly, treatments and technologies change during the follow-up period, so by the time you have results on one treatment, the treatment may have significantly changed, so that the results are no longer applicable to your current situation anyway. Regardless, we do know that prostate cancer can recur a long time after treatment, and a rising PSA is the most sensitive way to know that cancer may be coming back. Unfortunately, with radiation treatments, because the PSA usually does not go down to zero or undetectable, like after surgery, and can bounce up and down for a number of years, it is often difficult to define cure. A statement of cure is not usually made until 5 to 10 years have passed and the PSA stays at its lowest stable level. Cure can be more certain as more time elapses after the treatment and can be quite certain at 15 years. Most studies report results after 8 to 10 years, but some now have reports greater than 10 years. Fortunately, PSA, the prostate cancer tumor marker, will be an excellent indication of treatment failure and can be used to determine this early, so that a second salvage procedure can be done to further treat the cancer, for example, with hormones, freezing, and surgery, depending on the situation. Brachytherapy is best reserved for patients with small prostates and low-risk prostate cancer, meaning a PSA less than 10, Gleason score of 6 or less, and clinical stage T1 or T2A. In these patients, it probably provides equivalent cure rates to surgery, with results reported at 6 to 13 years showing stable PSA levels in 76 to 93% of patients. We say probably here because there are no good long-term studies comparing surgery and brachytherapy directly head-to-head, -head, and good 15-year results for modern brachytherapy are not yet available. For medium or high-risk prostate cancer, brachytherapy usually must be combined with hormones, external beam radiation, or both to maximize cancer control.
In these patients, lack of cancer recurrence has been reported in 50 to 85 percent at 5 to 13 years. Prostate cancer risk is defined in detail in separate modules called Understanding Prostate Cancer and Making a Treatment Decision. Should brachytherapy treatment not have been successful, or if the cancer recurs, meaning that it comes back, a few other treatment options are available. Cryoablation or cryotherapy, which involves freezing and destroying cancer cells, may be used as a second attempt at cure or control. And rarely, a prostatectomy, which is surgery to remove the prostate, may be performed. In either case, the chance of complications from these procedures is higher after brachytherapy than in previously untreated men, as the radiation affects the tissues in the prostate and surrounding structures. Further radiation is not usually recommended, as once an organ has been radiated once, it will not respond to another course of it. The other type of treatment available for recurrent disease is hormone therapy, which involves medications or surgery to stop production of the male hormone testosterone, which fuels the growth of prostate cancer. The major advantage to brachytherapy is convenience. The treatment is only one session, it requires little or no hospitalization, and it does not significantly disrupt daily activities. It has minimal post-procedure discomfort, and serious complications are unusual. Brachytherapy allows for the use of much higher radiation doses than can be used with external radiation therapy, increasing the likelihood of destroying a tumor. And compared with prostatectomy, surgical removal of the prostate, it requires only a minor surgical procedure. Brachytherapy is available widely throughout North America. Having said all of this, keep in mind that brachytherapy is still a surgical procedure, so some downtime is required and some complications can occur. Brachytherapy is still not as readily available as other treatments in some areas and is expensive relative to some other treatments. Failure of the procedure usually cannot be treated with surgery or further radiation, making these situations challenging to manage. Finally, since the prostate is not removed, there is the possibility that some cancer cells will remain or recur. To summarize, brachytherapy is a type of radiation treatment for prostate cancer that uses small, radioactive seeds placed in the prostate to eliminate cancer cells. It treats the cancer at the source by emitting radiation and causing cancer cell damage locally, thereby minimizing the radiation effects on neighboring tissues and organs like the bladder and rectum. It involves consultation with a urologist and or radiation oncologist and implant planning using an ultrasound. It is a short, minor surgical procedure that uses general or spinal anesthesia and may not require an overnight hospital stay. Brachytherapy is well tolerated. There is minimal discomfort afterward, and the majority of side effects are minor and short-lived. Brachytherapy can, however, affect a man's urinary and sexual function, and this is important to understand. Brachytherapy is reserved for carefully selected men with low-risk cancer, and in these men it can be very successful, with cure rates similar to surgery. These are just a few of many online resources available to educate you on prostate cancer and help you find support. There are also many books written specifically for patients with prostate cancer, and this is just a sample. These may be available at your local medical library, bookstore, or prostate center. These medical references were also used to assist in preparing this presentation and are available for your review on the internet or at your local medical library. These references were also used. We sincerely hope that this module has furthered your understanding of brachytherapy treatment for prostate cancer. We wish you the best for the future, and thank you again for viewing this educational program.